we're going to be looking at the required practical, the first part of the required practical related to water samples and potable water. Um, the first thing we need to think about is the purity of water samples. One of the simplest ways to find out if water is pure or not is from its boiling point. In reality, this practical will be quite difficult to uh, do, but theoretically, uh, we can take a water sample um, and we can have a thermometer in our water sample. So here's a thermometer. And if we heat this water, the point at which the water starts to boil should be 100 degrees Celsius for a pure water sample. So this is one of the main ways that we can uh, identify whether or not water, a water sample is pure is by its boiling point. If it boils at exactly 100 degrees Celsius, it's pure water. There's nothing dissolved in it. Um, salt water would have a uh, boiling point greater than 100 degrees Celsius. It would depend on the amount of salt uh, d dissolved in it. We can also have a look at the pH of the water. So the way that we would do that is to take our water sample, put it into a test tube and add some universal indicator. Now, we would expect distilled water to have a pH of 7 and therefore we would expect the universal indicator to turn green. However, there are other water samples that would be neutral, that would have a pH um, of 7, but could also have some salt dissolved in them. Uh, what we tend to find out is that rainwater uh, is often ever so slightly acidic, so maybe about pH 5 to pH 6. So we would expect uh, a yellow colour from our universal indicator. And some salt water samples can be pH 7, uh, can be pH 7, but they can also be slightly alkaline as well. So maybe a pH 8, in which case we'd be expecting a green for that and a green-blue colour for um, pH 7. So adding universal indicators to find the pH of our samples can give us some indication of the purity, uh, but there are some examples of uh, pure uh, salt water samples that will also have uh, a pH of 7. The main part of this video is actually for us to have a look about how we would find the percentage of salt in a salt water sample. So, the practical method we would carry out would be to take an empty crucible or evaporating dish or evaporating basin. So this is uh, my, my way of representing this. Um, and we would find the mass using a balance. So I'm just going to say, for argument's sake here, we've got 120.0 grams. That is just the mass of the um, porcelain evaporating basin. We would then take our salt water sample, 10 cubic centimetres of our salt water sample, and measure it out using a measuring cylinder, and pour this into the pre-weighed crucible and find the mass of this and we would expect about 10 grams of uh, the 10 cubic centimeters of salt water to give us about 10 grams in my example here it's exactly 10 grams so these two masses here will tell us exactly the mass of salt water that has been added so the difference between those two um, will tell us the amount of salt water that's been added. What we then do is put our evaporating basin with its water sample in it on a gauze, which is also on a tripod, and then we would heat that with a Bunsen burner. And our first observation is that the water would evaporate, so that would escape into the air. Once we've done that, we will be left with our crucible or evaporating basin that now has some salt crystals. So some salt crystals will have formed in here. We would see some salt crystals having been formed. So our first observation is that the water disappears 
it evaporates and then we're left with some salt crystals at the end. Then our final step would be to reweigh our crucible with its now salt crystals in it. And I'm just saying here for argument's sake that that would give us a mass of 124.2 grams. And the difference between the empty crucible mass and this mass here tells us 124.2 minus 120.0 gives us 4.2 grams of salt. So we've got our two pieces of information now. From this, we've worked out that we've got 10 uh, cubic centimetres, or I should actually really say there, 10 grams of salt, water, and within that, we've got 4.2 grams of salt. We're then in a position to be able to carry out a calculation. So, the percentage of salt in our sample is going to be equal to the mass of the salt divided by the mass of the salt water multiplied 100 to give it to us as a percentage. So if we take the numbers that we've had in our little thought experiment here, which is 4.2 grams divided by 10.0 grams multiplied by 100, this gives us an answer of 42% salt. So just as a quick review of the practical that we've done again. Crucible, we find the mass of an empty crucible. We add 10 cubic centimetres of our salt water sample to it and we'll reweigh it just to check that that is indeed 10 grams. The difference between the full crucible and the empty crucible tells us the mass of the salt water that's been added. We then heat the water sample uh, using a Bunsen burner on a tripod and doors. We will see the water evaporate, and then we will see that salt crystals has formed. We reweigh the crucible now that just has the salt in it. The difference between that mass and the empty mass of the crucible gives us the mass of the salt. And then the equation that we need uh, to carry the, uh, to work out the percentage is here. Thank you very much.